Uh, my name's Peter Toll and I'm the Office Managing Partner here in Perth. Today we'll be talking with Sharif Andreas, who's BDO's Global Head of Natural Resources on the topic of building a sustainable business. Sharif, welcome. Thanks, Peter. Glad to be here. Yep, looking forward to the conversation coming up. Um, within the current pandemic landscape, has sustainability taken a back seat for organisations or is it now more important than ever? Interesting question. Certainly in the period leading up to the pandemic uh, coming around, and, and sustainability had become a really important factor for, for companies right across many industries. Um, when the pandemic hit, I think many companies uh, really focused on just survival. Um, so those companies that have survived have now brought back sustainability. So it's now come back to the fore again. So I took a back seat for a little while, but I think uh, going forward, it's uh, come much more important than it was. There seems to be, uh, I suppose, an increased focus on this from the big investment houses on sustainability and, I suppose, companies' response um, and actions towards this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in, in the past, the response really, or the requirement really, was for returns to shareholders being key. Um, investment houses and investors in general are now not looking just at maximising shareholder returns. It's uh, how those returns have been earned and how those returns uh, impact the environment and, uh, and the community are much more important than, than they ever were. Yeah. Do you see that the mining industry is probably needing to re-image um, what they do and how they do it from potentially just pillaging and raping from the planet effectively? There, there's certainly a, a, let's put it, a lack of understanding. I think it's a truism to say that everything is uh, grown or mined and um, the role of mining companies is, is one that's um, not as well understood as it ought to be. And those mining companies need to uh, need to make sure that their message is really well understood in that many of the things that are required in the future of the world, um, particularly those around um, sustainable things like uh, wind farms, and solar panels, uh, everything like mobile phones and battery storage, all the elements that are required for that come from mining companies. And so mining companies really need to need to um, do some better messaging and start to do better messaging on how they fit in that ecosystem. Yeah, I think we're seeing them starting to become or well, position themselves as technology or renewable companies rather than mining companies, a lot of them. Yes, yes, yeah. they certainly are. I suppose just looking at an Australian focus, what elements do Australian organisations need to consider um, achieving a sustainable business and creating long-term value? Yeah, I think uh, we, we mentioned that in the past the focus was on shareholder returns. It's it's much more than that now. The uh, Australian companies need to be looking at um, where they sit in terms of uh, it, 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 sustainable investors, requirements that investors need for sustainability, what their customers' expectations are, what uh, their employees' uh, expectations are for sustainability, and overall, as an overriding thing, what the community expectations are. I think all of that has to be taken into account. Can organisations create a competitive advantage and build a sustainable business without compromising future generations? I believe they can and, and, and they really have to as well. Um, sustainability is, is encompassed somewhat in the UN Sustainable Development Goals and I think that any companies that, uh, that look at those goals and figure out which ones are the most relevant for them um, will be in a better advantage, particularly if they're, they're the first movers. There'll be a period in time, if not now, but very shortly, where all companies, all businesses will be expected to be sustainable and have a social license to operate. So certainly those that are early movers would be an advantage in, in that. Yeah. And what are the opportunities for business to capitalise on the environmental social governance factors to attract investors and new talent? Yeah. There's no doubt there's going to be a, a, a war on talent. Um, and I think that the people we're seeing coming out of universities now expect more than just uh, a wage from an employer. They expect uh, to work for a business, work with a business that has um, that ha has has values and has uh, a reason for for operating. And that reason has to be around sustainability, whether it's environmental or whether it's to do with the, the community. I think that it's going to be more important than ever to make sure that you you tick those boxes. And are you seeing any trends from the big investment houses 
investing on this basis? Are there some commodities they're potentially avoiding? Yeah, certainly in the, in the mining industry, we're seeing that um, in the past there used to be um, specific green funds that just, for, that just invested um, in environmentally friendly projects. Now we're seeing that as a more, uh, more, more general issue around investment houses. And they're, not, they're looking at things like coal, for example, and uh, many funds won't invest in coal, uh, many won't invest in oil. And we're seeing some that won't invest in things that have uh, uh, issues around tailing dams, for example. They're probably some of the big areas that uh, the investment houses are steering away from. Yeah, and with regards to the investors, is it all investors or is it just a range of investors or size of investor? Yeah, we're certainly seeing, uh, I mentioned that uh, there were green investment funds this, this started with. Now we're seeing a lead being taken by some really large private equity firms, um, some really large superannuation funds and pension schemes that are taking a lead, which many others are following. Um, and I think with that, there's an expectation amongst all investors that, um, that the, the companies they invest in will be adhering to, to social, socially responsible policies. Yeah. Look, if this isn't on the agendas of uh, the large corporates and even the mid-tier to smaller producers and explorers it needs to be, I would have thought, and um, uh, it would be more a, a given rather than nice to have going forward, I would have thought. Oh, absolutely. And we're seeing this not just in the companies themselves, but in the businesses that they work with right through the supply chain, the value chain, to make sure that their suppliers and the companies they work with also have uh, values and, and uh, social license credentials that align with their own ones too. Well, I think that's about all we've got time for Sharif anything further to add as a final wrap-up comment no I think I think that's all I think we're going to see a lot of innovation in this space and a lot of benefits for those companies that realize how important it is to have uh, social license and sustainability right at the core of their strategy their values and everything that they do point well made Sharif thank you for your time and uh, appreciate your insight thanks Peter